Okay, Math Nines, welcome back. In this video, our focus will be to analyze the graph of a linear relation. Okay, and just a reminder that a linear relation is just a relation that has a straight line graph. So all of the things that we graph should end up being a straight line. Okay, first of all, just a couple of definitions. Our independent variable, you'll often hear me refer to this as our input. Um, it is our input, it is also our x coordinate. of the point that we will graph, or the points that we will graph, and it is also the value that determines the other value. So the independent variable determines what the other value will be. So it determines the other value. When we're talking about the other value, we're talking about the dependent variable, which is the y. Okay, so our output is the generator from the input. So the output is our Y coordinate in the points that we will plot for these different lines. Okay, and this is also, so this is the value that is determined by the input or by the independent variable. Okay, so it's determined by the input. Okay, and we'll get a sense of what that looks like a little, a little closer uh, in our first example. Okay, so first of all, in our first example, we are going to make a table of values and then graph. Okay, so we are given uh, this equation of y equals 6 minus 3x. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the order of these terms. Okay, so I'm going to switch the order. So we have positive 6 and negative 3x. I'm going to write the negative 3x first and then the positive 6 after that. Okay, the reason for that is because, I'm going to draw a line down the middle here, uh, the f one of the most common forms of a line that we use is the slope intercept form of a line. Slope intercept form of a line. So the slope intercept form of a line looks like y is equal to mx plus b. Okay, so we're going to highlight this because we're going to come back to this over and over again this year, next year, all the way through high school. Okay, so what these different values means mean are the x and y in that equation, these are just your points on your line. Okay, your m is referred to as your slope and that's equal to the rise over the run. I'll show this in just a minute. And B is your y-intercept. It's where your line will cross the y-axis, okay? So in our example, we have uh, y equals negative 3x plus 6. I'm just going to highlight the numbers uh, that we're looking for. So our slope is going to be negative 3, and our y-intercept is going to be 6. We'll keep this in mind for later on in this question. Okay, so if we're asked to find a table of values and then graph this thing, um, we have a bunch of inputs. Remember our x's are just our input. Input, sorry that's kind of messy. Uh, and then our y value is just our output. Okay, so this is our output. Okay, so what this means is we are going to put negative 2 in wherever we see an x into our equation. So our equation is y equals negative 3x plus 6. So for each one of these, we're just going to do negative 3 times our input. In this case, it's negative 2, and we're going to add 6 to it. Okay, so negative 3 times negative 2 is 6, plus 6. Our output is going to be 12. Okay, and then we're just going to continue that algorithm the whole way down our table of values. Okay, so for each input that we have, we are just going to do negative 3 times that input plus 6. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3, plus 6 is 9. Okay, now 0 is special. 0 is what is going to give us our y-intercept because the x-coordinate of this point will be 0. Okay, so again, we'll just put 0 into our equation and we'll get an output of 6. Okay, and then we can do the same for 1, negative 3 times 1 plus 6. That's going to be negative 3. Oh, my apologies, that's going to be positive 3. And then the last one we put in 2, we have negative 3 times 2 plus 6. That's negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Okay, so now we have a bunch of coordinate points that we're now going to go and plot. Okay, so our first one is negative 2, 12. I'm just going to scroll up here so we can see 12 in the y direction. So negative 2, 12 is going to be a point 
up here. Okay, next, our next point is going to be negative 1, 9. So negative 1, 9 is going to be here. And then we have 0, 6. And we have 1, 3. And we have 2, 0. Okay. Awesome, so we have uh, five points on this line, and there are actually an infinite number of points on this line because we could choose any input we want and put it into this thing. We could choose, you know, negative uh, 1.5 and put that in here, and then we'd do our work, and we'd end up with an output of, uh, well, what would that be? Uh, negative 3 times negative 1.5, that's positive 4.5 plus 6. We'd end up with an output of 10.5. Okay, so our point would be negative 1.5 and 10.5, so we'd end up with a point somewhere here. Okay, and there are actually, I'm going to put a box around this one because it's special. And there are, we could choose any input that we want, and we could plot just an infinite number of lines the whole way along this thing. Okay, so we're going to draw a line for this. Okay, and the next thing to just note that two big things. One is that our slope is negative 3. Okay, so we'll just have a look at what that actually means in this graph. What that means is going from one point to another, we are going to go uh, down 3 and over 1. So we go down 3 and over 1. We go down 3 and over 1 and we'll get the next point. Okay, so that is our slope. Our y-intercept, so y-intercept is 6, that gives us the value where our line crosses the y-intercept. Do a big triangle around that because it's another special point. Okay? Okay, one last thing to add here is if we can put an infinite number of points onto a line, that means that we can draw a solid line through it, and that means that we have what's called a continuous function. Okay, so continuous is going to differ uh, from discrete. We'll look at a discrete relationship in the in our next example on the back page. Okay, let's go take a look at that. Okay, in example number two, we have a table that shows the cost of t-shirts at the Urban Legend, a popular store in Mathtown. We are to graph the data. Okay, so in this table of values, we're given the number of t-shirts, t, and that's going to give us some cost, c. Okay, so on our graph, I'm going to go and just uh, label our axes here. Our x-axis, this time I'm actually going to label it with t because it represents t-shirts. Okay, this is going to be the number of t-shirts that we're going to be buying. Okay, and on the y-axis, instead of labeling it y, I'm going to label it c. Okay, so here we have a number of t-shirts as our input, and we get an output of three and a half dollars. So we end up with a point, looks like so. Okay, and remember each one of these values, each one of these lines, sorry, in the table of values gives us a coordinate point. Okay, two, seven will be our next point, and then finally we'll look at three, ten point five. Or 10.50. Okay, so 2.7 is going to be somewhere here, and then 3 and 10.50 is going to be somewhere up here. Now, this is an example where we would not join these points because it is impossible to have 1.5 t shirts. You can't do that. The thing that we're looking at is the relationship between t shirts and cost in this case. Uh, it's not our general x and y um, graph that would give us a continuous function. Okay. Look at uh, example number three here. Uh, example number three is saying, hey, student council is holding a dance. The profit is four times the number of students who attended minus $200 for the cost of the music. So write an equation that rep relates profit to the number of students attending. Okay, so profit in the business world is just whatever uh, we can sell. Or this is our revenue. Minus our expenses. Okay, what we have left over is called our profit. Okay, so this is a word problem where we have to look at this thing and say, okay, well, the profit is four times the number of students who attend, and then we're going to subtract or minus 200 for the cost of the music. Okay, so our profit, P, is going to be from our revenue, which is four times the number of students, or four times N, and then we're going to subtract off the $200 because that is our expenses to run 
uh, this dance. Okay, so now that we have uh, an equation, we can go and put um, our inputs into this equation. So in our work here, we'll just write down the equation underneath the work. So our profit is going to be 4 times the input, 4 times 0 minus 200. So our profit here is going to be negative $200, or we've lost 200 bucks. Okay, so uh, if we had 50 students that attended, we'd have 4 times 50, which is 200 minus 200, our profit would be 0. And then 100 would be just the same algorithm, 4 times n, or 4 times 100 minus 200, so we end up with 400 minus 200, and that gives us 200. So now we have some coordinate points. We have 0, whoops, 0, negative 200 should be below the x-axis, down here somewhere. Okay, this is 0 and negative 200. Okay, the next point we have is uh, 50, comma, 0. So if we have 50 students that attend, so we have to kind of think, okay, well, if 4 squares represents 100, this one has to represent 50. So 50, comma, 0 is another point. And then 100, comma, 200 is our next one. Okay, so there is a graph for this relationship. And again, we probably wouldn't draw a line here because really you can't have for half a person, right? We can't have like four and a half people come, and that is our input, is the number of people. Okay, so we would just leave these as points, and this would be a discrete graph. Okay. Okay, so next question in part D, we're asked how many students must attend to make a profit. Okay, so we start making a profit. Our profit is represented on the y-axis, and I should have labeled these before I started. This is number of students. Okay, and our profit, so our profit, as soon as our profit gets above zero, uh, then we, we start to make a profit. So we know that at 50 students, our profit is zero, so we could probably safely say that, hey, how many students must attend to make a profit? Just over 50 would do the trick. Okay, just over 50 will give us some profit, and we could try 51 students, put it into our algorithm, 4 times 51 minus 200, 4 times 51 is 204 minus 200. Box with us, and we would be making a profit of four bucks. Okay, so we're making making four bucks uh, a student here. Okay. Okay, so this section's big idea is to analyze. Well, I guess do both graph and analyze. the graphs of linear relations. Okay, hope you get to going with that topic, and thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.